Okay. If you're watching this presentation, you might be having some trouble with some of the poems in this unit at Apex. Um, if you're having trouble, don't sweat it too much, okay? Uh, come see me. We'll go through some stuff. Um, but hopefully this video series will help you out a little bit um, and give you a deeper understanding of the poems and of the authors, okay? Let's start with The Bean Eaters by Gwendolyn Brooks. Uh, Ms. Brooks was born in 1917. She passed away 11 years ago. Uh, in the year 2000. <clears throat> it's important to understand where these authors are coming from, what their experiences were, because those life experiences are what these authors use as motivation and inspiration to write the poems that they wrote. So it's useful to understand where they're coming from. Uh, starting with Gwendolyn Brooks. Uh, like I said, she was born 1917 in Topeka, Kansas, but shortly after that they moved to the south, si south side of Chicago. Okay. And despite uh, Ms. Brooks' extensive travels and periods in some of the major universities of the country, uh, she has remained associated primarily with Chicago's South Side, where she grew up. Now, the South Side of Chicago is, a, or was at the time, a very poor area. M much of it still is. Um, and growing up in that environment, uh, what her family uh, lacked in material wealth was made bearable by the wealth of love that um, that family had for each other uh, as a result um, of very warm uh, relationships that, that she had with her family. Uh, and when she writes about families, uh, despite their economic advantages, those families aren't dysfunctional most of the time, okay? So Gwendolyn Brooks writes from an intimate knowledge reinforced by her own life experiences. And you see the characters in her poems. They're, they're generally uh, poorer folks, okay? um, typically African-American. She is considered one of the protest poets uh, of the uh, civil rights era and beyond. Of course, she continued to write uh, long past the civil rights. But her characters normally are poor, but you don't see her railing against economic uh, inequalities. She very rarely ever rails against the city of Chicago. What she focuses on primarily is giving you a snapshot of what daily life was like for these challenged uh, African-American families and focuses on the love and the warmth that was present in those families, okay? So let's start out with the bean eaters, okay? They eat beans mostly, this old yellow pear. Dinner is a casual affair, chip, uh, sorry, plain chipware on a plain and creaking wood, tin flatware. Two who are mostly good, two who have lived their day, but keep on putting on their clothes and putting things away and remembering, remembering with twinklings and twinges as they lean over the beans in their rented back room that is full of beads and receipts and dolls and cloths, tobacco crumbs, vases and fringes. Now, on the surface, it doesn't seem like this poem is saying a whole lot. But when we break it down a little bit, we can see that warmth and love that is represented in this poem. They eat beans mostly, this yellow, old yellow pear. If you're eating beans, then you don't make a whole lot of money, folks. Okay? So she's admitting right off the bat that her characters are not rich people. Okay? They're impoverished people. Um, and, of course, the setting, you're thinking south side of Chicago. So they eat beans mostly, this old yellow pear. Dinner is a casual affair. Plain chipware on a plain and creaking wood, tin flatware. They don't have the best of dinner where okay <laughs> they don't have the best plates they don't have crystal glasses they don't have you know all the finer things but dinner's a casual affair right two who are mostly good two who have lived their day but keep on putting on their clothes and putting things away they're older they're older folks, okay? They're content 
with the happiness that they have in their lives. They may not be content with their lack of money, but there is a contentment in that they're together and they love each other. Okay? And remembering, remembering with twinklings and twinges as they lean over the beams in their rented back room that is full of beads and receipts and dolls and clocks, tobacco crumbs, vases, and fringes. What she's doing here is using ordinary things, ordinary things that are not the nicest of things, and you get this vision of what this room looks like, and you get a vision of what this couple is like, okay? There is warmth in this room. And he uses, or she uses, the objects in the room, which are everyday things. There's nothing extraordinary about what they own. Full of beads and receipts and dolls and clocks and tobacco crumbs and vases and fringes. Okay. Nothing crystal. Nothing gold. Okay, nothing glittering. No big screen TV, folks. Everyday meager things surround these two. Okay? These two who love each other. They've lived their lives. And they can look back on happy memories. Not rich memories in terms of money. Rich memories in terms of warmth and love. Very simple poem. Okay? Very simple on the surface. But when you break that surface and you feel the emotions that she's wanting you to feel, It really is a significant poem. Okay? So that's the bean eaters.